with bread baking at home becoming ever more popular, and it really is, home bakers are eager to take their bread baking skills to the next level. On today's show, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to create bread so remarkable that your family and friends won't believe you bake them yourself. We're going to be making artisanal boule, onion and leek focaccia, and a brioche feuillete. Plus, Erin Sloniker is here to share her technique for adding the perfect finishing touches. All today on Martha Bakes. Have you ever looked at the bread sold at your artisanal bakery in your neighborhood and wondered if it's even possible to create a loaf of bread as beautiful in your own oven? Well, I think the answer is yes. And today I'm going to teach you how to bake the classic round loaf of bread known as a boule. Now first we have to make a poolish. In a small bowl, stir together a half a cup of bread flour, a quarter of a teaspoon of dry yeast, and a third of a cup of lukewarm water. Now remember, lukewarm is lukewarm, about 110 degrees. Once this is stirred together, cover it with a piece of plastic wrap and let it stand at room temperature for eight to 12 hours. And we have one already prepared. Dissolve one teaspoon more of active dry yeast in one and two thirds cups of lukewarm water. Again, no hotter than 110 degrees. And let that just dissolve. Four teaspoons of salt, goes right into the poolish. And a lot more bread flour, three and a half cups. And a half a cup of rye flour. Now we'll add our softened yeast. Just stir this liquid into the flours. And I hope you have a machine that's fitted with a dough hook. Here's the dough hook. This makes mixing much, much easier. So what we're trying to do here with the dough hook is to create a nice moist dough, get that liquid absorbed into the dry flours. We want the dough to be smooth, we want it to be elastic, and we want the bowl sides to be clean and the dough released from the sides of the bowl. I think it's done. Just put that on a floured surface. And I've never mentioned this before, but a pet peeve is washing a bowl like this that still has sticky dough in it. Don't just put it in the sink and take your nice dish sponge and try to wash the bowl with your sponge. The dough is going to get all in your sponge, ruin your sponge. Let it soak a little bit in the sink and then just use your fingers or a scraper to get any excess out of the bowl. That way you don't ruin your sponges. Look how beautiful that dough is. Oh. Gather the dough into a bowl, plunk it down into the oiled bowl, and cover tightly and it should double in bulk. That's gonna take about an hour and a half to two hours. So now look how beautifully risen this dough is. That's rise number one. Don't get excited, not ready for the oven yet. We want it to be really a fine texture. So I'm patting it into about a 12 inch by 10 inch rectangle. And I'm going to fold this into thirds and then into half. Turn it over and we have another nice round ball and plunk that back into the bowl. Cover for rise number two. This is the second rising and look, it has again reached the top of the bowl. Now scrape this onto your counter. Oh, it is very airy, big bubbles forming. So now we're finished with the bowl. Keep uh, flouring your hands and again pat this into a sort of 10 by 12 rectangle. Fold that. And then it's really whatever you want. It's basically forming it into a round. And this will be the underside of your bread. And this beautiful soft top will be the top of your bread. Let this rise until doubled in bulk, about 45 minutes. 
I'm so excited. Look how beautiful this looks. Now it's quite moist on top, so take a little strainer like this and just dust all over the top with bread flour. Now it's time to just invent a design for the top of your bread. Every baker has a design. You can use a string like this. Give yourself some guidance with a string. And this is a special little bread cutting razor cut from the very bottom all the way up to the top. If it sticks a little bit, put it in a little bit of oil. I'm using olive oil because it's so good. There. And then you can just cut little leaves. The razor is curved so that you can get pretty designs. So there, it's ready to go into a preheated 450 degree oven. Make sure you have a pizza stone in the center of the oven on the center rack. And to create steam, put a cast iron skillet on the rack below. Now slide your rack out a little bit just to make it easier. Right onto that beautiful pizza stone. And now the ice can go right into that cast iron skillet. Now close the oven door because that steam is creating a crust. So now bake the bread until the crust is a deep golden brown and an instant read thermometer inserted in the center reads at least 205 degrees. Let it cool before cutting and serving. Definitely a recipe to keep in your back pocket or in your kitchen drawer. Enjoy. Edible Landscape perfectly describes our next bread. It's a rustic Italian onion and leek focaccia. There are onions, leeks, and chives, along with a sprinkling of rosemary and flaky salt for good measure. So first we are going to saute our onions, six medium yellow onions, a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Cook these until they are golden and caramelized. This is gonna take 45 minutes. So do this first and start your dough. And your whole house is gonna smell really good. So we start with starter. In two and a quarter cups of warm water, mix three quarters of a teaspoon active dry yeast. Let that soften a little bit. And in the bowl of our mixer, we're going to add four and three quarters cup of bread flour, the same high gluten flour that we used for the boule. Now the reason I like the dough hook is that it saves you a lot of time. You could easily make bread without it, but I think it's a time saver. And then add your yeast mixed with the water and just let the machine do the job. Once the flour and water are combined well, just cover with plastic wrap and let sit for two hours. So look what's happened to our yeast dough. This is doubled in bulk. What we're going to do now is add the flavoring. Four and a half teaspoons of coarse salt. You might ask, why didn't we put the salt in first? It might retard the rising of the dough. So we add it now with the caramelized onions. That giant pan of onions has reduced to this. It's also been cooled. So just add all the onions to your dough. That is the flavoring for this delectable and unusual focaccia. Now get this on your mixer. Use the dough hook for about five minutes at low speed. Turn this out onto a floured surface. And so once you've turned the dough on itself eight or nine times, just lift the whole thing up and place it in a clean bowl. This will now be covered and rise until doubled in bulk. Once it rises, take it out, fold it eight or 10 times and put it back in the bowl and let it rise a second time. And now for the artwork. This is doubled in bulk the second time. I have prepared the decorative features of the focaccia, leeks cut into long, narrow strips, some chives, garlic chives are good or regular chives, and some rosemary sprigs. And these are coated with olive oil. 
It's okay if your hands get completely covered with oil because that will help prevent the dough from sticking on your hands. A baking sheet with sides. We need a third of a cup of oil. Just spread that all over the bottom. Then the dough. Release it from the bowl with your handy scraper. And this gets slid right out on the baking sheet. The dough is very soft, very malleable. Get it to the edges. And as it rests, it spreads. You can see all those great caramelized onions. And then decorate. These are so beautiful when they're laid as if they were growing right in the dough. So basically you're making a garden in the dough. And the chives add a dark green color. And then use those very fresh and beautiful dark green rosemary sprigs here and there so that they will infuse the dough with their very pungent, delicious flavor. So once this is all arranged, cover the entire thing with more plastic wrap and let rise again for about 45 minutes and then it will be ready to put in the oven. So this is how the focaccia looks after 45 more minutes. If you think it needs a little tiny bit more oil, just sprinkle a little bit more on top. And then you can also sprinkle rather liberally with flaky sea salt. This is shiny and tasty and it just makes everything look fantastic. Isn't that pretty? As pretty as a picture. Now your oven must be preheated to 450 degrees. In a regular gas oven, have a pizza stone on the floor of your oven. But in an electric oven like this, put it on the lowest rack. Set your timer 30 to 35 minutes. So this is what the focaccia looks like when it comes out of the oven. Let it cool just slightly before serving. And to serve, cut with a serrated knife into rectangles or squares. And it is delicious just like this or with your favorite cheese. If you want to serve a showstopper at your next dinner party, I would say this is it. Enjoy. Light and airy, brioche is one of my favorite breads. And today I'm going to make it even better by making it laminated. Instead of incorporating the butter right into the dough, we are going to layer the dough with the butter. In a measuring cup, two thirds cup of milk and one envelope of active dry yeast. Let the yeast soften in the milk while you measure out the dry ingredients. Three quarters of a cup of bread flour and three cups of all purpose flour. Three cups, a third of a cup of sugar and one tablespoon of salt. So just mix this all together. I'm using a dough hook. Add your yeast mixture. And then four eggs. Four tablespoons of butter total at this stage. A tablespoon at a time. And the dough will be smooth and shiny. It takes about six minutes. So the dough looks nice and shiny and not too, too wet. So we'll take it out of the bowl. You can scrape it onto a lightly floured surface. So you can knead this a little bit. Don't incorporate too, too much flour in it. You just want to get it so you can handle it. And let it rest in the refrigerator on a tray for approximately an hour. So now we have to make a butter package. One and a quarter cups unsalted chilled butter. And let it come a little bit to room temperature. I just wrap it in plastic wrap. Use the rolling pin and bang it into a rectangle. So I'm at eight inches long, but now we have to get to five inches wide. Just let this chill. 
and we're ready to incorporate that into our brioche dough. 20 minutes in the refrigerator is enough for this. So here's our chilled dough and our rectangle of butter. So roll the dough into a rectangle seven by 18 inches on a lightly floured board. So what you're really doing is encasing the butter inside an envelope of dough. The butter packet is inside these two layers of dough. And then you're going to fold this this way and this this way. And notice I'm going to continue to turn it a quarter turn and it keeps going like that. The dough gets smoother and more beautiful with each turn. Now wrap it back up again and chill it 45 minutes. You want it completely chilled before you do the next two turns. So here's the puffy dough after it was turned two additional single turns and wrapped well, refrigerated overnight. So take this out of the uh, plastic, use plenty of bench flour, and roll this dough into a 14 inch square. Now it is a little bubbly, so just roll it carefully. Because we've had all those turns, the dough has 81 layers. It's a lot of layers. So there we have 14 by 14. Very lightly brushed with water. It's our glue. And roll this up into a tight spiral. And then we want six even pieces. So you start in the middle. One, and then this into thirds. Now we want the buns to stick together. And I want the seamed sides on the inside. So these are going to stick together like that. And place them in well buttered bread pans. These are standard nine by five inch loaf pans. Make sure the wet sides go together. Now cover these with plastic wrap and let rise a warm spot until the dough is light and full of air and it's expanded to nearly fill these loaf pans. That'll take about an hour to an hour and a half. So this is what they look like when they are almost filling the pans. Make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees and the rack is in the center of the oven. Bake for 35 minutes. Brush with lightly beaten egg and continue to bake until deep golden brown and an instant read thermometer reads 205 degrees. So here is our finished brioche. The dough is perfectly cooked, light and fluffy inside, has a beautiful golden crust. I think this is extraordinary. Let cool completely before serving. A little bit of extra care, changing the dough to a laminated dough makes all the difference. Don't you agree? While there are some very traditional patterns for scoring bread, we have Erin Sloniker with us to share her take on scoring and what inspires her designs. Very nice to have you Thank here, Thank you for Aaron. having me. You're recently new to the art of baking, but you're doing some pretty fancy stuff here. Thanks. I try. <laughs> yeah, well, it's very nice. When did you start baking bread? About a year ago, actually. I mean, I think I baked bread in the past, but um, I got it in my head that I wanted to make sourdough bread, and I had seen some beautiful scored loaves on social media, and I wanted to try and make it myself. So besides the aesthetic beauty, what are some of the other benefits of scoring bread like this? Well, so you need to score the bread so that it has room to grow because the, once the yeast hits the heat of the oven, it's gonna expand. And so you need to give it space to expand and you can make it do whatever patterns you want if you score it strategically. Well, I'd love to try. This is your dough. This is my dough it's from Constance, dough? my starter. Oh, I named her she Constance. Has a name? Yes. How old she, is she? She is one year old. Oh, a baby. And, uh, <laughs> and where'd you get name. her from? I made her from scratch myself. Oh. I combined whole wheat flour and water and let her do her thing until finally she you became a, a yeast. A yeast, yes. Oh, great. So we're going to turn out this beautiful <laughs> bread. And I guess it's best to, yes, to invert this way so we don't lose the bread, right? Yes. 
Mm. So that now these bowls are beautiful. Yeah. They will even give a nice marking on the bread sometimes. They will if you didn't put a yeah. towel, but I put a towel down. So you peel the towel back. And I've dusted it with a mixture of rice flour and regular flour. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to just brush that so it's not super thick on top. So rice flour and regular yeah, flour. Yeah, that keeps it from sticking. And then we'll dust it just lightly with all purpose, just to give it, here, I'll give you yours. Just so you have a nice smooth coverage because then the cuts will really show up. Yes. Okay, so you have a professional looking llama. Well, this was a gift. So um, it's called a llama. It's just a razor blade mounted yes. in a handle. And I have the little cheapo yes. version. They come at all different price points. Yes. Um, so I like to cut on a cake turntable because it really gives you access and you can right. hit all the different directions without having to contort all over the place. So I thought you could maybe do this geometric loaf okay. where you cut sort of straight across and then fill in the corners. And then I like to do leaves in a round. Also, one thing to say is that you cut deeply will give you more opening, and then not as deep will be lighter, so you can play with that as you go. So I'll okay. do leaves in a circle. Very nice. Yeah, that looks perfect. You could even stop there and do little other patterns in the yes. section or continue with the graphicness. So I like my little crown of leaves. Oh, you're all done already. <laughs> I did. I, I did quickly. Okay, so now what? <laughs> So now we put it in the oven. I will have preheated a Dutch oven to 500 degrees. And we put it in parchment paper and all, put the lid on and stick it in the oven. That creates a steamy environment, which helps the dough rise and get a nice crust. Then after about half an hour, I take the lid off and let it finish and get nice and browned. Okay. So your inspiration comes from, is this an inspiration? Yes, yeah, so this is a Sachiko embroidery, which is a familiar quilting pattern That's as well. One, and so right? I tried to do that. Like I see geometric patterns everywhere and I knit and I crochet and I sew. And so I was looking for other places. Oh, nice. Patterns. Well, I can't wait to see what that one looks like. And I can't wait to see what mine will look like. Really extraordinary and so much fun. So for people who want to make their sourdough starter and have their own, yes. Um, female named starter. <laughs> you can name it whatever you want. Yes, yes. Uh, what advice would you give them? Because I think everybody's well, so going to want to start. There's a lot of tutorials online, plenty of uh, sources for how to do it, but the most important ingredient is patience. It takes a lot longer than you think it will. So did you start in an open bowl or? Yes, you did. I just did it in a jar uh -huh. to begin with. Open um, jar. Open jar. Has to be open to the air. Open to the did air. Did you do it in an open window or did you do it no, outside? No, I kept it actually near my stove where uh -huh. it's a little bit warmer because it likes to be uh, like 76 to 78 degrees. And I started it in the spring and so it wasn't very warm in my apartment. <laughs> so I needed to keep the but, temperature but, steady. And when did you know that it was a starter? So you know it's ready when it passes the float test. You take a large bowl of water, take a little spoonful, drop it in. If it floats, it's ready to make bread. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. So I hope all of you get going on your own starter. If not, just get going on your own bread. You will have such satisfaction when you put a gorgeous bowl like this on your family table and say, tear in. Thank you all very much for watching. And Erin, thank you for being here thank today. Thank you for having me. It's very nice to see your beautiful work. Thank you. And I hope to see all of you again on the next episode of Martha Bakes. Using green frosting and a round tip, pipe a stem. Then using a V leaf tip with untinted frosting, make about 10 petals by pulling straight out from the stem. Now switch to yellow frosting and with a small round tip, make a mound of tiny dots in the center. Using a V leaf tip and green frosting, pipe a small leaf at the base of the stem. 